what is up guys this is Tigo back with another video on the redmi note 5 pro and today in this video i'm gonna be showing you the latest havoc os on this device and this let me actually go into the about section here as you can see this is the 2nd october 2020 build of the latest havoc os and this includes the g apps here you can see the havoc os version says 3.9 and if you notice the android version this is still based on android 10 of course and here we have the havoc os logo up top this is not an Android 11 build again. This is still the Android 10 build. The security patch here is still of September 5th, 2020, not quite October yet. And here the Havoc OS version again is 3.9. The build date again shows 2nd October 2020. If I go into the system panel here, still you won't find any system updater. I do not know why they, they do not include the system updater, but yeah, I would have loved to see the system updater, but that's just not present. And if you are talking about flashing this ROM, well, I just flashed with the latest firmware. You can check the like latest firmware links in the description box below. I used latest Orange Fox Recovery R11, and with that, I flashed the firmware, flashed the ROM file, and this ROM file includes the G apps itself. And if you actually don't wipe the vendor, like while wiping, or if you are coming from a custom ROM, just wipe cache Dalvik system data. You do not need to wipe vendor if you are on the latest vendor. So you just flash the ROM file, and you can reboot. That's how simple it is to flash this ROM. Now, let me quickly talk about the stock launcher here. Well, this is a shady launcher. Let me go into the about section. Here, as you can see, it says shady launcher by Anushek and the version is 10 of this launcher. Let me go back. Here, we get pretty much a lot of functionality. Here in the gestures, we do have double tap to sleep, swipe down for notifications and we have swipe down to clear all. And if you go into the icons, we have some icon pack customization. We also can enable notification dots if you want to. And we have the grid option. You can change the dock like icons panel, I guess. And column and row numbers are there for the launcher itself. And here we also have this app prediction disabling option inside app drawer. We can like enable or disable the icon labels in portrait mode or in landscape mode. Then there is the multi-line labels and hidden apps option is there. Let me go back, we have the home screen settings and from here we have the search bar, Google feed, etc. You can enable or disable as you would like it. And there is also a feature which says always center wallpaper so it won't scroll I guess. So as you can see right now the wallpaper does not scroll and if I go over here and like put this option disable and right now as you can see the wallpaper scroll is back. So yeah, there is the like kind of features that I'm showing over here and I really like it. Here swiping down in the home screen gets you to the notification panel or the quick settings panel. Swiping up of course gets you to the app drawer and as I disabled the app predictions it does not show any suggestions so that's pretty good. Here we have the Google's discover page to the left and yep it works fine, works smooth. I do not see any lags or stutters over here. And on the home screen the widgets and stuff are working fine as you can see I have been using this subscribe account widget this has been working totally fine. Now talking about the quick settings panel here we do have some interesting things like the screen recorder. Let me actually show you here you can set this allow display over the apps and right now as you can see you can just start the screen recording right away as you can see right now the screen is being recorded and by the way while the screen recording is happening as you can see it shows the resolution and stuff over here 720 by 1440 as it says over here and you can also pull up the camera over here as you can see right now. It is recording with the camera so if you are showing some presentation stuff you can really use this feature and also you can stop the recording or draw somewhere in the ui like this over here so yeah there are functionality like this and i really like it with this default screen recorder there are pretty much a lot of features and here we also have this fps info so if you enable that and right now as you can see the fps appears on the top right here and you can see the fps all the time so that is really cool if you're gaming or something if you want to notice the fps you can do that the fps info option is pretty cool also there is the always on display option if you want to enable or disable that from the quick toggles and if you edit and add more toggles if you want to do that here as you can see there is plethora of quick toggles that you can add from and there are the app toggles over here so yeah lot of quick toggles options are there even heads up you can disable or enable that from here night light and stuff should work fine so yeah now talking about the stock camera here this is the miui camera present by default now i would say this camera sh is working fine pretty much if you are taking normal photos or selfies this should work fine but let me tell you as soon as you go to the portrait mode it freezes the camera in just a moment you will notice i guess sometimes i have seen it's like freezing the camera 
right now it's not doing that so that's good i think in low light or something it freezes the camera but right now it's not freezing but like taking portrait pictures with the front camera is actually working fine let me actually take a picture but right now as you can see the portrait mode actually worked as you can see this portion is blurred completely so this portion is in focus so yeah the portrait mode is actually working fine with the front camera but with the back camera you might notice sometimes it freezes that i have noticed in the video settings let me actually go over here in the settings and let me show you with the rear camera you can shoot up to 4k 30 fps or 1080p 60 fps both options are there and if you want to shoot with the front camera let me go into the settings again here we have up to 1080p 30 fps option to shoot with the front camera of course i really like that the miui camera is present by default here and by the way the double tap to sleep in the home screen anywhere is working totally fine so not a problem with that let me actually show you the fingerprint scanner speed right now as you can see the fingerprint scanner is like very fast no issues that i have noticed over here with the fingerprint scanner with both of my index fingers as you can see it works 100 percent of the time i did not have any issues with the fingerprint scanner speed here it unlocks very very fast and by the way talking about the customizations you will get all the customizations inside settings and if you go into the configuration center you will find all the customizations that you need let me actually lower down the brightness and here as you can see inside here we still have plethora of customization we also have this media panel so you can have this ringtone focus mode and stuff i'm not going to show you the like all the things over here but inside gestures we do have this swipe to take screenshot and stuff so if you want to take a uh, like scrolling screenshot or something you can do that and as you can see this is the oxygenous kind of scrolling screenshot let me show you as you can see it did take the longer kind of screenshot so yeah the scrolling screenshot functionality is there and that is the oxygenous kind of screenshot functionality and here inside lock screen we do have this pocket detection and stuff so let's assume i'm double tapping to sleep over here and right now if i double tap to wake as you can see double tap to wake simply does not work right now but if i do this right now as you can see the double tap to wake does work but let's assume the device is in your pocket and you are double tapping over here it won't work let me actually show you this brightness thing is there so you can just slide a finger on the status bar to increase or decrease the brightness of the screen so this is a very handy feature and i do use it on a daily basis that is working totally fine here and in such status bar we have this brightness control that i just showed double tap to sleep on the status bar is there network speed carrier level everything is there in terms of battery percentage you can have the option to show it inside the battery icon or next to the icon in portrait circle etc option is there for the battery icon but no big dotted circle here then we have status bar icons so headset bluetooth etc icons you can like enable any of them we have the notification count enabling option too then data disabled icon and stuff everything is there you can have customizability of the clock and the status bar logo if you want that quick setting customizations are there so you can customize the column and row numbers haptic feedback is there if you want to have that then we also have the slider position changing option of the brightness bar over here like this bar over here you can have it on the top or like like on the bottom or the top i mean and the adjustment buttons are there so you can disable this buttons over here which increases or decreases the brightness i guess let me go back inside ambient display we have some more things like always on display and the new notification wake up double tap to wake and stuff for the ambient display is there then pick up and stuff is there pick up should work fine and force brightness values option is there if your ambient display brightness is too much and here we have the buttons and gestures and inside over here we can actually change the pill bar size but we cannot change the thickness of this pill bar over here if you're using the android 10 gestures there is also two and three button navigation option and arrow keys option is there inside power menu we do have advanced reboot still so if i tap and hold the power button here as you can see i can just directly reboot to recovery or fast boot with the advanced reboot option so that is very cool let me go back we have the swap keys the playback control arrow animation and stuff is there and we also have this long swipe type kind of thing so yeah you can set a custom action for the long swipe thing and inside notifications we have the charging led notification led customization edge lighting and stuff is working fine heads up you can disable that if you want to from here or you can customize heads up or the notification ticker over here and kill app button noisy notification etc is there the screen padding and stuff you can have that you can just disable that and you can have some padding if you really want to okay so the animations and you can have the whole ui animation from here so that is cool inside misc we have this screenshot type well there is the full and partial 
and charging animation is there so yeah and condition cards suggestion cards everything is there gaming mode is there if you want to have that that's all regarding the customization but right now let me just go into the display settings here is how it looks like we have the adaptive or auto brightness the night light dark theme styles and wallpapers and inside over here you can customize a theme from here of course and from here you have the presets for the rock screen clocks inside wallpapers let me show you the on device wallpaper this is the one which is present by default and i have been using that but you do have the option to enable these live wallpapers these are pre-downloaded ones so you don't have to download them separately that's a good thing and you can set any wallpaper from here they should work fine the live wallpapers are there by default so that is what i like over here let me go back we have the screen timeout so lock screen and screen timeout both are there rotation settings are there 180 degrees of course there and the dpi customization is there double tap to wake and stuff is there but let me tell you if you want to customize the accent colors you cannot really do it from here inside customizations but if you really want to customize the accent colors you can go into the display settings then go to the styles and wallpapers then from here go to custom and just like choose a font from this plethora of options of the fonts so you can just choose over here then you can choose any accent color from here there are plethora of accent colors but you have to go to this theme section to do that now inside battery settings this is how it looks like it does have the battery temperature and stuff screen on time but there is no the battery cycles or something that i was expecting but here it does not simply show that and the battery life in my opinion should be good enough you can get five to six hours of screen on time if your battery's health is good as device is pretty old so i would say if your like battery hardware is actually good you can get actually pretty good battery life like five to six hours and you can see the full usage by tapping over here let me go back we also have the sound settings and here we do have the mi sound enhancer or the mi audio direct and by the way i have been using it with the youth edition with this the sound output via the headphone jack present on the bottom i was looking at the top because i am used to that and here with the headphone jack present on the bottom i would say the sound output is great and even with bluetooth the sound quality is pretty fine you can also disable the charging sounds charging vibration the screenshot sounds and stuff from here then we have these volume steps you can customize that and by the way this is how the volume panel looks like and you can expand it just like this and it does work fine i would say and there is also this vibration and haptic feedback so you do have this in call vibration vibrate for calls vibrate for notifications disabling option you can disable the notification vibration if you want to and there is the ringtone vibration pattern changing option let me go back and over here now let's jump into the interesting part inside security we do also have the face unlock so that is very cool i will show you that later on but let me actually go into the app lock and here is the app lock and this is how the panel looks like you can lock any particular app just like if you want to lock this app you just tap on this like lock icon and it gets unlocked or locked depending on the situation it is if it is unlocked it will lock or if it is locked it will unlock so that is how it is and here you also have this hide notification content option so let me actually show you this telegram app i have locked and this is how the like locking thing looks like and you have to tap the fingerprint scanner and by the way if you have the face unlock setup it will work also with the face unlock so that is very cool here as you can see right now let me just tap the fingerprint scanner and right now as you can see the telegram app opens but let's assume you just like go to the home and right now if you go into the recent panel and as you can see it shows this white kind of thing depending on your theme if you are using the dark theme it will show gray kind of look over here i guess so yeah it won't show the contents of the telegram app on the recent panel that is a really good thing in my opinion and here actually from the recent panel let me show you you can go to the split screen mode and stuff by just tapping on these icons so yeah that is how it works and it is very cool and let me actually see over here so right away if you open that app after closing it it will like stay unlocked for 15 seconds but after 15 seconds it will lock again and as you can see you have to put pin or the fingerprint or your face unlock data of course if you want to like get into the app so that is very cool you cannot even go from the recent panel so yeah the privacy kind of thing over here is very good and i like that right now let me just set up the face unlock so as you can see this is how the setup of the face unlock looks like so i'll just start okay so the animation did look really really cool so let me just double tap over here right now on the home screen and double tap to wake and as you can see the face unlock speed is blazing fast no issues with the face unlock i'm not tapping the fingerprint scanner by the way as you can see my hands are like this so right now if i double tap 
it unlocks right away i would say the face unlock speed is blazing fast even if you compare it with the latest devices right now which are launching today the face unlock speed is very very fast in my opinion okay so as you can see with the app lock the face unlock did work okay so let me try that again with the like locked app right now and as you can see with the face unlock even the app lock does work so no issues with this app lock it works 100% of the time now to be honest i would say the like memory management and stuff is really good over here and let me actually show you by opening a couple of the apps over here let's open twitter play store now let's open youtube and this led rgb remote app here as you can see it works fine if you are noticing this ir bluster with this led rgb remote app again works fine no issues with that and let me just open all these apps from memory again and as you can see all the apps do stay in memory and you can switch between apps just like this so this works pretty fine no issues with the like app opening up speeds or even the ram management over here is very good now talking about banking apps you will be a little bit disappointed because as you can see with the safety net test it kind of fails because this basic integrity test says success this response signature verification says success but the cts profile match says failed by default at least on my device it's showing like that but i don't know google pay or something might get like set up fine but it also may not like 90 percent chances are the banking apps won't work right out of the box here because simply the overall test fails over here but i'm not sure if it actually will fail in the like real world test i don't have a sim card in the device to test that so right now i cannot really say that so that is what i'm trying to say here that banking apps may not work like most of the time over here so that is a disappointing thing one disappointing thing only that I'm seeing over here about this latest Havoc OS. And if you want to know the benchmarks here is the Ant2 and Geekbench score of this ROM. And also if you are in like any menu over here and you do see this rotation icon. So that is very cool of Android 10 and this is working totally fine. And there is also this Google Assistant kind of thing. And as you can see you can set up your Google Assistant and just by swiping on the corners just like this you can trigger Google Assistant. So that is very cool. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked this Redmi Note 5 Pro's Havoc OS video. And yes, I know I have been like not doing a video on the device. But yeah, I am back with a video. So do share this video out with your friends if you if they have the Redmi Note 5 Pro. If they want to install a custom ROM on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. This is the like best ROM that I could find for the Redmi Note 5 Pro right now. The latest one is the Havoc OS 2nd October 2020 build and it has been working quite great on the device and give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now